All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna show you how to make your own bucktail jigs here in this video. All right, if you're like me and you're getting tired of spending six, seven, eight bucks for uh, jigs at the store and you end up breaking them off and losing them, uh, and you wanna start making your own, maybe something to do in the off season, this is a pretty fun and pretty simple thing to do. It takes a little bit of time and you definitely need some equipment uh, just to get started. I'm doing this for a couple of years here, so I've accumulated quite a bit of stuff, but uh, the basics, you're gonna need some sort of a, a melting pot lead pot like this one here this is a ladle type then you're going to need a mold obviously depending on what you want to make um, this is a banana jig mold you need hooks for that obviously you're going to need your powder paint you need a heat source like a blowtorch or a heat gun and then this is a fluid bath here for painting um, that i made and uh, there's directions on how to do that online you need your bucktails you're going to need threads flash or anything that you want to add to it and then a couple basics like scissors a bobbin um, some other little tools you're going to need a vise eyes and uh, a resin to lock your threads guys if you're going to do this you're going to need safety gear there's no way around it all right you're working with lead which is extremely toxic uh, at really high temperatures so it, it is nasty stuff and it's pretty dangerous definitely going to want a respirator um, i get these welding gloves at harbor freight that go halfway up your arm these are pretty good um, some sort of eye protection and um, I actually wear uh, this jumpsuit down here while I'm doing it and then at the end of the day I can just take it off and leave it in the garage I don't have to track lead particles in my house you're gonna want to do this in a ventilated area I open up the garage door completely and I use two fans um, so I'm, I'm moving air in and out of the garage at all times all right so let's just go ahead and jump into it right now First things first, this is my uh, lead pot right here. It's called a Hot Pot 2. All you do is plug it in. There's no controls on it or anything like that. You plug it in, it heats up on its own. You put your uh, lead ingot in there and just let it melt. It takes about probably 25 minutes to melt two pounds of lead here. All right, these are my molds. Uh, well, most of them are from Do It Molds Company. Um, but if you're looking for something in particular, you might be able to find it on eBay. There's some custom mold makers on there. Um, but I have molds that'll make anything from a 3 8 ounce jig head for fluke teasers all the way to 12 ounce mojos. All right, for this video, I'm going to be using my large banana jig mold from Do It. I'm just going to be making a 1.5 ounce uh, banana jig, and then we're going to tie a bucktail to it. So you can see this has uh, four different sizes in the mold. We're only going to be using the 1.5 ounce. What I like to do is uh, while the lead is heating up, the pot's heating up, I'll just go ahead and sit the mold on top of it. That way the mold itself gets hot, and that's going to help with uh, the lead separation later on once you pour it. What I also like to do to help heat up the mold, I'll take my blowtorch and just on low heat, I'll go ahead and uh, heat up these cavities. Um, it just helps a lot later on. When you're pouring hot lead into a cold mold, it might make it really hard to get the jig actually out of it. Uh, it sort of gets stuck into the uh, cavity. But if the uh, mold is nice and hot, then there's no problem. I know a lot of guys have had success lighting candles beneath the cavities and getting uh, soot in there, and that helps with the release as well. And that also works. Like I said, I'm gonna be making a 1.5 ounce banana jig here for this video. I'm um, using Eagle Claw 426191 6.0 hooks. I like to keep a coffee can on the workbench with a uh, fork and a ladle, and I use that to scoop out any impurities that uh, come to the surface of the lead. I also like to keep a uh, pair of precision diagonal cutters and uh, just a regular pair of needle nose pliers on the workbench as well. The diagonal cutters uh, you're gonna to use to remove the excess lead from the jig, which is called the sprue when it comes out of the mold. I'll show you that later. And then the pliers are just to get the jig out of the mold so that uh, you don't have to touch it because everything's gonna be super hot. We're probably 20 to 25 minutes in now and you can see the lead is starting to melt. Once this completely turns to liquid, then I'm gonna go ahead and remove any impurities that uh, rise to the surface. You're gonna see me use these uh, welding gloves throughout the entire process here. But anyway, here's the fork that I'm talking about. Starting to remove some of these impurities that rise to the surface. The lead is extremely heavy, so uh, anything else that's that's not lead is gonna come up to the top. I sort of all push it to one side with the fork and then scoop it right out, put it right in the coffee pot. 
Now, the cleaner the lead you start with, then the less impurities you're going to have in it and the less of this you're going to have to do. If you have really clean lead, you might not even have to do it at all. If you're working with dirty lead, it can become an issue because dirty lead tends to bind up in those cavities and you're not going to get a complete pour. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and just pour into the one cavity I intend on using just to get the uh, mold even hotter. I'm not going to put a hook in it. I'm just going to pour some lead right in there and I'm just going to let it sit uh, for a few seconds and really get that cavity hot. The hotter that cavity is, the easier that the jig's going to come out of the mold. And make sure when you're doing this, you're not pouring this over uh, your feet or any surface that you want to get ruined. As you can see there, some of the lead came out the bottom because there's no hook in the mold. All right, so now I'm going to take that out, use my uh, needle nose pliers, and then go ahead and put that right back in there and let it melt. Now I'm going to take my hook, go ahead and set that in the mold. I'm going to close it up and we're going to pour our first jig here. This takes a little bit of practice. Uh, I mean, I have four pounds of lead inside this pot right here, so it's a little bit hard to balance and get a precision pour, but if you do this enough, it really gets kind of easy. Just pour it right to the top so it's flush there with the surface. So in less than 10 seconds, it's done. Pull it out with your needle nose pliers, drop it on the ground. And now what you want to do is remove that sprue, and this is where the uh, diagonal cutters come in. Just grab it at the base there and just kind of rock it back and forth, it'll come right off. As long as the lead's still hot, it comes off very easily. Put it right back in the pot, let it melt. Go ahead and pour a second jig here. Same exact thing. Yeah, and the pouring becomes a lot easier with practice. And there's different pots. Uh, there's Lee pots that are precision pours, but uh, I pour 12 ounces of lead sometimes, so I like being able to pour it as fast as I, as I want or need to with a ladle type pot. Same thing, diagonal cutters, cut off the sprue. Right back in the pot, nothing's wasted. All right, I only poured three jigs just to demonstrate for you guys how this is done, but same thing from a different angle. What you're looking for here is a consistent pour. You don't want to go too slow, because if you go too slow, you'll end up with this layered, almost ripple effect in the lead. If you pour too fast, you're going to overflow the cavity, and you're going to have lead going everywhere. So it just takes a bit of practice to get the right speed. It only takes a couple of seconds for that lead to harden. Now what's going to happen after you take that sprue off, there's going to be a little piece of uh, lead still remaining there on the end of the jig, and we're just going to go ahead and file that off. You can see it right there. Now before you file those jigs and clean those up, I'm going to uh, want to get rid of my excess lead that I still have melting in the pot. So you definitely want to get one of these molds, it's an ingot mold. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour the excess in there. And once that hardens, I can go ahead and put that with the uh, rest of my lead supply. All right, while you're filing this lead, you definitely want to wear your respirators so you're not inhaling any uh, dust particles. It only takes a couple seconds and some light pressure with the file uh, right where that sprue was, and you're just going to remove that excess material and make it smooth and get it ready for the next step, which is going to be painting. All right, this thing right here is called a fluid bath, and it's definitely a necessity if you're using powder paint for your jigs. If you don't have one of these, then you're going to have to dip the jig into the jar that the paint comes in, which is a really small jar. So if you're using bigger jigs, you're not going to be able to coat it entirely. Not only that, but you have to use a nail or something to stir up the paint after every time you dip the jig. And it's really tedious and time consuming. If you use one of these, you get a much more consistent uh, layer of paint. It's much more durable. It's much faster, and you actually use a lot less paint. Uh, it's very simple to make. It's just some PVC pipe, um, some aquarium tubing, aquarium air pump and a couple of valves. There are instructions on how to do it online. There's some YouTube videos uh, which I followed. It cost me a couple of dollars, all said and done. You can buy them pre-made, but they cost over $100 and definitely not worth it. If you take a look inside this thing, you can see that it's basically just an air chamber on the bottom. 
And there's a piece of paper, in this case a coffee filter, separating the paint from the air. And then you have your aquarium tubing and your air pump. You're going to need a heat source to heat up your jig. Uh, I use either a torch or a heat gun, depending on uh, what type of jig I'm making, the size of the jig. I found that the heat gun is a lot more forgiving. Um, it doesn't get nearly as hot and uh, it, it definitely heats the jig more uniformly, whereas the blowtorch is much faster, uh, it's better for smaller jigs. The only issue with the torch is if you're not careful or if you hold it in one spot too long, you can melt the light accidentally. I use Protec powder paints exclusively. They make just about every single color that you could think of. Today I'm just going to do a white and then a two-tone white and pink. Just keep it simple. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is put a couple of spoonfuls of paint into the fluid bath, which is not running at this point. Always start out with less than you think you need. You could always add more to it later on. You don't want to put too much in there and then turn the fluid bath on and then have the paint start blowing out the top. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I'm going to slowly start opening up this valve here. You don't want to open it all at once because if you do, the paint's going to rise to the top really quickly and it's going to go everywhere. It's going to overflow the fluid bath real quick start to see some bubbles forming on the bottom. I'm going to gradually increase the amount of air I let into it. And you're going to see the paint start to rise toward the top slowly. All right, at this point, you can determine if you need to add more paint or if it's a couple inches from the top and enough room to get your jig in there and the paint's not overflowing, then you're good to go. It should look like boiling water. At this point, we're ready to start painting. So I'm going to glove up and I'm going to grab the first jig. Like I said before, you can use either a heat gun or you can use a blowtorch. For an ounce and a half jig head, I'm going to use a uh, blowtorch on this. I'm going to put it on a really low heat. And I'm just going to use a um, locking vice grip plier there to, to hold onto the hook. Now you got to be really careful here that you don't hold it in one spot for too long, otherwise you will melt the lead. So it's only going to take a couple of seconds. Make sure that you heat up the eye of the hook. It's very important because if you don't heat up the eye of the hook and you paint, it's going to clog up the uh, the eye. If it's heated up, then uh, you don't even have to clear the eye. All right, another couple seconds on this, and then we're going to go ahead and dip it. In and out, a quick tap, get any excess paint off, and that jig is uh, ready to hang up and dry. The first jig was a solid color. This next one, I'm going to do a two-tone. I'm going to do a white with pink on top. So I have a jar of pink here that I'm just going to stir up with the back end of a paintbrush. I'm going to heat this jig up the same way, as evenly as I can. Making sure that I get the eye of that hook as well. If you don't heat the jig up enough and dip it in the paint, you'll know right away because the paint's not going to stick to it. If it's heated up properly, the paint's going to liquefy as soon as it hits. And the uh, jig is going to look wet. Alright, into the white first. Jig looks wet now. I'm gonna go ahead and just take my paintbrush and just sprinkle the paint on from above. And that's really it. Now you have a two-tone jig. Just go ahead and hang that one up to dry as well. I just want to note here, it is important to make sure that that eye is clear, because if it's not, now's the time to correct it. Um, I have a paper clip ready to go that I can uh, stick through there and clear out any paint that's in there. If it's clogged and you don't catch it till after you bake the jig, you're probably going to have to use a drill to clear it out. It is nice to know that the paint is reusable, so whatever you don't use here, you can just pour it right back in your jar. I only have one fluid bath. Um, you can make several fluid baths connected together so that if you're using multiple colors, it's a lot easier. So what I have to do is use my shop back here, which uh, just gets all the white paint out of there and it's ready for the next color. 
here's where we are at this point. We got three jigs painted. They've been sitting on the rack for a little while now and they are dried and cool to the touch. But they're not done yet. The last step here for painting is they gotta be cured. So I use a toaster oven. What this is gonna do is give the paint job an extremely hard and durable finish. I could probably fit 75 jigs or more in this toaster oven easily. I just put four screws up in the top of my toaster oven there so I can get that rack up higher. I can fit uh, longer jigs in there. Now I do about 400 degrees for about 25 minutes uh, on bake. All right, the jigs are done now and I've given them enough time to cool off. So I'm gonna take them out of here and just put them on the drying rack. And this one's gonna be ready for tying. You're gonna wanna put a hook art on of some sort to protect yourself before tying. I use a spline. I have a wide variety of bucktails, all different colors. These are actual deer tails. Uh, dyed, of course. So I'm going to be doing a white with a uh, pink on top for the two-tone. I'm ready to start tying now. You can see I got the jig already clamped down on the vise. Um, I'm going to select a thread here. I got my flash, my bucktails. I don't know what this tool is called, but it's 100% necessary. That's what you're going to use to pull the thread through your bobbin. If you don't have that, it's next to impossible. Very frustrating. I'll try to find out what it's called, then I'll put it down in the description. I'm gonna let this play out in real time so you can see uh, what's involved time-wise and how tedious this is. I've selected a thread here. I'm gonna go with the white. I like Danville threads. Uh, I think that they have a good breaking strength. They don't snap on you all the time. They lay flat. Um, and just overall, they're easy to work with. So there's this tool. I forget what it's called, but I'm gonna put my thread through it. You'll see here. It's got a loop in it. It's like a piece of wire with a loop in it. You put your thread through it and then you go ahead and you pull that through your bobbin. And what your bobbin is gonna do is gonna hold that spool of thread. All right, first thing I like to do, I'm just gonna make a couple of wraps right here on the uh, on the jig. No bucktail or anything, I'm just gonna lay a few uh, wraps down right here. I'm gonna get that tag end laying flat along the jig, I'm gonna wrap that up and then I'm gonna trim off the excess. So there's the tag in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and cut that off. All right, so now we have our foundation here and we're ready to start adding some bucktail. All right, since we're doing a two-tone here, I got pink on top. I'm gonna start with the pink and we're gonna go ahead and put that on top so that it lines up. I'm gonna grab some of the hair here at the base. I'm gonna to try to bunch it up as best as I can and then just cut it off clean right here at the base. Now, these are precision scissors that are made for this. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to, uh, get a pair of scissors that's made for, for jig tying or fly tying. I'm gonna secure that down with about four or five wraps, not tight at this point. It's just to hold the hair onto the jig and then I'm gonna go ahead and spread it out with my fingers. You see how I kind of move the hair around on top there? to make sure it's where I want it. Grab a little bit more here, same thing, cutting it off at the base and trying to keep it all in line and together. I'm gonna do a couple of wraps here, not too tight, so I can still move it around. And once I have it where I want it, right there, I'm gonna go ahead and lock them down. I'm gonna start tightening this up a little bit tighter. Now the device obviously rotates and you can lock it in place and that's the whole point of it. Keep your hands free. So now I got the top done with the pink. I'm gonna start with the white. You don't wanna to grab too much hair otherwise it gets difficult to work with. Just a pinch, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the side here. And I'm gonna try to line that up with the pink uh, on the end, closer to the hook end, the uh, hook eye end. I 
If it's alright, it's not perfect, then you can just wrap over it later on, or you can trim it off with some scissors and wrap over it. All right, I'm going to rotate and do the other side now. Again, here we go, just spreading the hair out. So I don't, I don't have it locked down yet. I'm just spreading it out and making it nice and even where I want it. And then I'm gonna come in with some tighter wraps. All right, now I'm just rotating and I'm looking around to see where it's bare. I might've missed the spot or it needs a little more hair. It looks like on the bottom here, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more white. You know, this really depends on how full you wanna make your bucktail. So I think it's pretty full at this point. It looks pretty even. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start finishing this up with some tighter wraps. I'm just gonna start on one end and then just work my way down to the other and then come all the way back. Make sure that no hair is sticking out anywhere. Once in a while, you'll break a thread if you're putting too much pressure on it. It's no big deal. Um, I was actually kind of hoping it would happen in this video so I can show you. I'm just going to go ahead and re-thread your bobbin and just pick right up where you left off. It's no big deal. It's not going to fall apart or anything like that. All right, so I'm getting toward the end of this now, and uh, this is the point where you want to add a flash or, you know, anything else that you might want to put in there. Uh, now's the time to do it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of pink flash here. And um, I'm going to put it on exactly the same way that I tied the bucktail on there. Uh, there's probably five or six pieces there. I like to do uh, five or six pieces on each side. Gonna do a couple of wraps here to hold it in place. Once that's in place, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. Same thing, five or six pieces. I'm just going to take my scissors here and trim off a little excess of the uh, flash that's sticking out. All right, now I'm going to finalize this. I'm going to wrap this up and down a couple times. Check my work, rotate it, make sure everything looks good. All right, and this jig is just about done. So now I'm gonna finish it off with uh, my knots. This is called a whip finish. I'm just gonna take my two fingers here, wrap it around, twist, and go around the jig head. I'll do this about five times. And that's gonna knot up nice there. Pull it tight, and then cut. They do make a, uh, a like a whip finishing tool, which I don't find necessary. We're just about done here. I'm just going to take my scissors and um, trim off any excess hair.
now for the final touch you're going to need something to lock these threads um, I use a UV resin this is solar as here so you're going to need a UV light and uh, I like to use a little paintbrush Basically, just going to start on the top. I'm going to put one bead straight across the top. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, put one on the side. I'm going to take my paintbrush, I'm going to spread that out so it's a nice thin layer covering the threads. Looks like we're going to need one more bead here right across the bottom. Now I'm going to hit it with the UV light just to cure it. And that's going to do it. So this bucktail is all but finished now. All we have to do is put eyes on it. And it's ready to fish. The eyes are like decals, but you're going to want to put uh, like a super glue or I like to use resin on these as well uh, to lock them in place there. Like I said earlier, this is an ounce and a half uh, banana style jig, and this will pretty much catch any fish in the ocean. So if you're looking to get into this, this isn't a bad mold to pick up. Uh, it's probably the most versatile lure in the ocean. It's uh, easy to make, it's fun to tie, and uh, it's a good way to get started. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. This jig is just about finished here. I'm going to put this last eye on, and uh, you'll see the finished product here. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, again, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. See you next time.